Hi everyone and welcome to the State Controller's Italian Heritage Month celebration. I'm Matt Ryan from the State Controller's Communications Office. You've seen the State Controller uh, do one-on-one -on -one interviews in the past when we celebrate some of the different and wonderful cultures we have here in New York. Just a few weeks ago, State Controller DiNapoli spoke with Spanish language journalist Herson Barrero as we celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month. You can still watch that interview on the State Controller's YouTube channel and his Facebook page. I highly re recommend you do so. For Italian Heritage Month, who better to talk about this than our own State Controller, Thomas Peter DiNapoli. State Controller, thanks for taking some time and letting us turn the tables on you. Yeah, it is turning the tables <laughs> on me, Matt, but uh, nobody better to have a conversation with than you, so thank you. Sure, so let, let's get right into it. Let's um, tell the audience, if you would, uh, about your background, how, when, and why did the DiNapoli family come to America. When I say DiNapoli family, I mean that broadly maternal, sure. paternal sure. side. Sure, sure, sure. I'm happy to do that. And I just would mention for our viewers, you know, in the past, certainly pre-COVID, we would always do these celebrations in person right. with, with honorees. With COVID, we kind of got away from it. And I guess we're still trying to get our footing back again. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that, you know, as you point out, we've done other conversations on, on different uh, heritage celebrations. I'm hoping in the near future, we'll get back to the in-person. Yeah. But in the meantime, uh, having a conversation is certainly uh, a way for us to celebrate, in this case, uh, Italian heritage. Mm -hmm. It does overlap with Hispanic heritage, yes. and we did have that conversation. So for me, my, my roots uh, trace back to southern Italy uh, on both sides of, of my family. My uh, mother's parents were both born in a little town called Asturno, which is outside of the city of Avellino. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's uh, east of Naples in the Campania region. And it's interesting that uh, that little uh, town or commune, as they call it there, is sister cities with Glen Cove on Long Island, which is huh. not far from where I grew up. Right. So that's how we ended up on Long Island, because, you know, the, the people tended to follow where. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Where, where other family, Paisanos, where, where they settled. Uh -huh. um, my family settled in, in, in Raza, which is near Glen Cove. Mm -hmm. um, on my father's side. Uh, his father was born in a little town called Paduli, not Padula or Padua. People confuse <laughs> it with Paduli. It's a little town outside of the city of Benevento, also in the Campania region. And uh, my grandmother actually was born here. Um, actually, she was born down south. Uh, her parents were from Italy, though. Her father, who died when my grandmother was very young, so we're not really sure exactly where, but he, he was uh, from Calabria, mm -hmm. which is also southern Italy. And her mother was, uh, I believe, from Salerno, as best as we could figure, so also uh, around Naples. So, so three of the four grandparents were immigrants, and uh, the grandparents ended up in Brooklyn uh, in various ways, mm -hmm. married in Brooklyn, uh, but moved out to Long Island to to raise their families, hence uh, how I was uh, born and raised uh, in Nassau County. So take us inside the uh, DiNapoli household growing up with an extended family nearby. Uh, we actually have a picture of you as a uh, young boy eating a loaf of bread just about as big as you were at the time. <laughs> what was that like growing up um, with this extended Italian family? Well, it was great. And, and, and look, the, the Italians are not the only group that value family or extended family, certainly. But... Uh, it is an important part of, you know, of the Italian American heritage. And it was wonderful for me uh, to have, you know, all of my, well, three of my four grandparents, my, mm -hmm. my grandfather, who I'm named for, actually passed away when my father was a young boy. So that was the one grandparent I never got to know. But uh, the other three grandparents were like a mile away from where I lived. Aunts, uncles, great aunts, uncles, lots of cousins, everybody in, in, in a small area. Uh, my great grandmother, I, I did have the chance to, to know one great grandmother. She would never leave Brooklyn. So uh, on the holidays, they would bring great grandma out to everybody on Long Island. Mm. Uh, so to, to have that proximity, uh, you could really build you know, strong bonds, sure. strong relationships. And um, you really value the elders um, in the family because they were the ones who had you know, the family history and the family knowledge. The w one regret I have, though, about uh, growing up is that, um, you know, growing up in, you know, the late 50s, early 60s, um, my grandparents, especially my mother's parents, you know, spoke a lot of Italian, not exclusively, but, um, and my great-grandmother uh, on my father's side didn't speak any English. So we were not encouraged to learn the language, you know, because we were Americans now. Yeah. You know, so you're American, you don't have to learn Italian. Interesting, yeah. 
but I think that, that we lost something by that. I certainly lost the uh, full opportunity to communicate um, you know, with, with that older generation. Uh, so I missed out, I'm sure, on some of the stories and, and some, some of the um, knowledge. And I do think uh, as I've gotten older and you know, appreciate uh, how every ethnic group you know, tries to retain what's special you mm -hmm. know, about their heritage, you know, language is very much you know, the gateway to culture. And, and I think it's a loss for many of my generation of, of Italian Americans that the language wasn't encouraged. So, yeah. you know, I do respect the newer waves of, of, of immigrants that have come in that work hard to retain language. Uh, and the Italian language is a beautiful one. Oh, I, yeah. I, wish I, I wish I had had the opportunity to learn it. Of course, when I went to school, they gave me French. So um, <laughs> not that I was very good at learning French, but, um, you know, so I think we lost something. But, but hey. The, the the importance of family, the importance of family celebrations, and much of that involves food. Uh, again, we're not the only ones that have wonderful food, but I think I think if you ask most Americans pretty what good their favorite there. cuisine is, I think Italian <laughs> would mm -hmm. rank pretty high. And uh, faith, I have to say, you know, religion was an important part of growing up. I think that for uh, the older generation, who you know, I mean, look, my family, and I don't have any unique. Italian American story. Mine's very typical. Mm -hmm. You know, the grandparents had nothing over there, very, very poor, uh, no real education, and came here for opportunity. And not so much because they wanted to leave home, yeah. but they really felt that they had to. Uh, and not all the family left. I mean, probably about half of the family, you know, stayed over there. Mm. Uh, so I think very much what helped get them through. You know, they 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 came over here. You know, around the you know. The, the turn of the last century, mm -hmm. uh, and and um, my parents were born in the twenties, so so they very much went from being immigrants putting down roots, having kids, and then the depression came, mm -hmm. you know, which obviously had a big impact. And and um, my paternal grandfather died, you know, during the thirties, which made it very hard for my grandmother to raise my father mm -hmm. and and my aunt. It was, I do think, that faith that played a big big role in bringing them through. So so the. So the church, you know, the Roman Catholic faith, uh, you know, was a very important part of that, you know, um, family, food, and faith, uh, you know, the, 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 those three uh, broad topics that I think you know, very much define my Italian-American experience, and mm -hmm. I think it's probably true for a lot of people. Yeah, you, I've heard you say before, my grandparents came from Italy with, with little more than their hopes yeah. and their faith. And, yeah. You know, whether that happened way back in the early 1900s or if it's happening now, I think it, it's... It's hard to imagine really what they're going through because a lot of people who come to America don't want to, right? They right. want to stay in their, their native land, all that right. they've known. And so really to leave all that behind is, it's, yeah. it's, you know, we really don't appreciate how difficult that was yeah. and is for so many people. You know, and they face challenges. I mean, you know, we, we probably don't talk about it a lot, but, you know, it wasn't easy for those immigrants when they came at that time. And there was a fair amount of discrimination against yeah. Italians. And education, which, you know, for many, you know, was a real pathway to success. You know, they weren't educated in Italy. And my parents' um, education was, you know, in the public school system. Uh, they didn't have the opportunity to go be, you know, beyond high school. So, you know, certainly for me growing up, it was a big deal for my brother and I to go to college. I'm sure. You yeah. know, because that was part of the definition of American success that my grandparents couldn't achieve and my parents, you know, weren't able to fully realize either. Um, so, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I, I appreciate that sense of, of we want to be part of the success, you know, of the American story. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's very much true for the Italian American community today. I think the community feels that we've contributed a lot, you know, we've been here for a long time and, um, you know, want those contributions not to be minimized. And I think that's why, you know, some of the issues that we see out there which continue as far as stereotyping, mm -hmm. negative image in the media, mm -hmm. you know, you know, be it kind of sometimes it's a, a, a buffoonery kind of yeah. depiction. Yeah, we've seen it or, in the movies, right? Yeah, organized crime. Right, Governor you know, Mario still... Cuomo used to talk about how Absolutely. he despised the term mafia. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, so I think that's there's still some of that, you know, that's out there that we have to, you know, com combat. So organizations, you know, like Sons of Italy that I've mm -hmm. been a member of for a long time, the Commission on Social Justice, which really works to fight against all discrimination, not just against Italian Americans, but um, also, you know, Sons of Italy 
uh, wants us to promote Italian heritage. So first of all, we have a good self-image, right? The first thing you need to have is a positive self-image. Yep. And, and you know, for the younger ones growing up now, they don't always have those positive images. So that's why the importance of celebrating heritage in a month like October, like we do, I think is key. Because you have to start with, you have to know who you are, be proud of it, because there are others who are going to want to define you in their terms, mm. often in negative terms. Uh, so that's why, you know, celebrating Italian heritage and the different organizations that do that, uh, you know, I appreciate that. And, and I, I probably celebrate it more now that I'm an adult and have, have a, you know, a broader perspective perhaps than when I was a kid. You know, uh, we were always proud of being Italian-American, but, but I, I think there's a lot of knowledge I've gleaned about the Italian American experience and and the Italian contributions not only in this country but globally mm -hmm. uh, you know by the organizational work of groups like Sons of Italy like Columbus Citizens Foundation uh, you know the Columbus Heritage uh, there's all these organizations and regionally we have so many wonderful uh, Italian American groups across our state I want to go back to something you said earlier when you talked about how you know some of your family left for America and, and a good chunk uh, stayed right in Italy. Did you get to know that side of the family? Why did um, those those family members decide to stay? Was there any friction between the between the two no, groups? No, I mean certainly not friction. Um, you know, in the case of on my on my mother's side, my grandfather's mother died when he was young, and and his father remarried and had another you know, set of kids. And so the, the older ones came over probably because they couldn't provide for them and they were old enough to them to strike out on their own. And the younger ones, uh, you know, stayed there. Um, yeah, I mean, when my grand, particularly my mother's parents, when, when they were alive, because uh, my, my father's father came over when he was a child. So we've had less connection on that side to the relatives in Italy. But on my mother's side, they kept in touch with uh, mm -hmm. with with their extended family, you know, brothers and sisters and cousins and so on that were still there. A lot harder to do back then than it is now. But they did it. They did it. You know, and every now and then someone would come to visit, and I'd be at my grandparents, and you know, they didn't speak English. I didn't speak Italian. I wasn't sure who they were. They weren't <laughs> sure where I was. You know, again, missed opportunity. And when my grandparents passed, you know, some of that communication um, fell off. Yeah. But I had the experience purely by accident. Uh, it wasn't planned for. I was in Italy and we were traveling from Bari to Naples. And I looked at the map and I said, you know, the, 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 the highway, the autostrada, they call it. I looked and I said, oh, that's my mother's parents' village. It's right, right in the middle of where we're driving through. And I said to my, my group I was traveling with, could we maybe take a little detour and, and go and, and they said sure. And one of, one of the one of my friends spoke fluent Italian, so he called ahead to the village hall, the city hall. Mm -hmm. um, it's a small little town in the mountains uh, of Avellino. And I remembered some names. I remembered a cousin's two cousins' name mm -hmm. and uh, uh, one of my um, uh, grandfather's uh, brothers was a uh, priest. You know, and I wasn't sure if they were still around or anything. Mm -hmm. So I gave those names. So we. We pulled into the town uh, literally the next day, and there was this rather large crowd that welcomed me. And not only did they have the the, the, the cousins who I remembered the names of, mm -hmm. and the priest was still alive. He was retired. He was well into his eighties. He was actually a half brother of, of, of my grandfather. Hmm. Uh, they 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 he lived nearby. They they got a cab and they brought him into town. And I had the experience of I got out of the car. And you see people that you've never met before, and and you look at that and you know that you're related. You, you see know the faces. One, you see the faces. I mean, I saw, you know, the faces of my grandparents. And um, I mean, it's, you know, um, Don Luigi, the priest. He, he was smaller stature than my grandfather, but he had my grandfather's face. And you know, it was an incredible uh, experience. And and one of the cousins spoke very fluent English, so that that made. It. And then of course. Because a lot of the family, both grandparents came from this little town. I've met all these other cousins I never knew even existed, you know, at all. And and uh, everybody, I mean, couldn't have been nicer. The challenge was everybody wanted me to stop by their home, you know. <laughs> and the nice thing was I kept in touch with, with some of those relatives. Unfortunately, the older ones mm -hmm. have passed on. Uh, and, and, and one of the younger children of the guy, these were actually my mother's first cousins, became the mayor of the... Uh, of of the uh, of the commune, 
So a it turns mayor, out, like a state controller. Well, it turns out we had some political <laughs> blood. But the other interesting thing was, again, because it was related to a lot of these people, um, they weren't all in the same political party. They didn't yeah. organize and oh, get along. Course. You know, <laughs> so it was very funny trying to navigate, uh -huh. you know, relationships of people I met for the first time. But, but having that personal connection, and 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 one of the one of my mother's first cousins who I met, uh, and who since. Uh, passed on, cousin Carolina. Her grandson has been studying here in the U.S. Uh, at NYU, so I, I've had the opportunity to get to know him a little bit. So I try, in a small way, to keep that connection. Uh, you know, um, you know. They always say, "When are you coming back?" And I haven't had a chance. And of course, on my father's side, I had the opportunity to go back to Paduli. Didn't find anybody I was directly related to. Although right. one or two people came up and said they were in Um But they, um, the mayor. Uh, made me an honorary citizen of Paduli. So nice. that, I felt very honored by that, um, uh, that they would want to, you know, have that connection with me. So, so it's, uh, it, it's, it, it's uh, in some ways a nice circumstance that I still have, you know, connections there. How many times have you been to Italy? Um, and it's got to be special every time you go back. Four or right? five times, yeah. I've, I mean, I've only been back to, well, I've, I guess I've been to Paduli twice and Sterno only once. Um, I've mostly been in the south. I mean, there are a lot of places up north I haven't been. Mm -hmm. Uh, but again, when I go there, besides, you know, really appreciating it, I wish I spoke the language, you know. Um, but you have the ear, you know, so even if I don't understand all the words, I feel like I'm back in my grandparents' house because, you know, you, you hear it, you know, the sounds are, the sounds are very familiar and the sounds are very, very comforting. Sounds of your youth. Sounds of my youth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go back to something you talked about um uh, discrimination? Did, did you well, did you face any discrimination as, a, as an Italian American in the in the fifties, sixties, growing up? Uh, and did your parents or grandparents t tell any stories, or did you learn of any stories like that? Well, my grandfather, my father's father, who I'm, who I'm named for, uh, and his name was Tommaso Pellegrino. Did ample. He got anglicized to Thomas Peter, mm -hmm. um, and he came here as a child. I think, as I mentioned, he. And he, he was in the army and he was sent back to Europe in World War I. He fought in France. And when he came out, he became a citizen when he was discharged. And as he was, and then they moved from Brooklyn, you know, to Long Island. And this family story goes that um, he wanted to be in the volunteer fire department. And he had a little bit of a hard time being accepted by, let's just say the community wasn't very Italian uh, mm. at the time. Uh, but he was. Uh, he did become a member. He was very proud of that. And my grandmother would always say how proud they were that he was the first Italian American in the in the Rawls and Highlands Fire Department. So yeah, I think they faced obstacles. I think for me, uh, especially growing up on Long Island, m maybe there was a little less of that. But there was some of it. You, you know, you'd always hear some of the jokes. You know, especially about you know organized crime. Mm -hmm. The most direct experience I had with something that was concerning, I, I had a job in high school. I worked as kind of like a, a janitor and office boy kind of thing uh, at, an, at an office building. And my boss, who was a great guy, uh, it, it treated me, you know, treated me well. He one day he, he was talking with one of the other folks that was there, and he, and he he looked up at me and he goes, "Oh, that's that's the Dago boy I have working for me." <laughs> and I was like, I had never heard, I had never heard the expression. Really? And it's kind of an old pejorative that yeah, people don't is. don't hear that much anymore. Right. So some of the viewers may be saying, I never heard that word before. Uh, but that was, that was one of the negative yeah. words used about Italians. And I went home and I said to my uh, to my dad, I said, um, the boss called me, you know, that Dago boy. What, what does that mean? You know, and I think it pained him to have to explain that, you know, um, some people use unkind words, mm -hmm. you know, uh, towards us. So, you know, that was the first time I felt something right in my face where someone was, mm -hmm. you know, saying something inappropriate. I, I, I give them the benefit of the doubt they wasn't meaning to be hurtful, but, you know, you think back at that and you think now, you know, how destructive, you know, the use of words can be. Uh, so yeah, I had, I had, I had some of that. Yeah. You know, as America gets older and new, newer generations come along, they understandably uh, examine some of the traditions and norms. One thing in particular that has faced kind of a re-examining um, of his legacy is Christopher Columbus, as you well know, a major source of pride for Italian Americans over the years. Is, is one yourself, you know, how have you um, come to, to understand the issue? Um, you, you obviously hear it from both sides. Well, I mean, look, I, I would say this, that, 
you know, Columbus became a symbol for the Italian community uh, to have a place in, in, in American society. So there's always a lot of talk about the statues, right? Even the statue yep, in New York. down in New York City, yeah. You know, which, you know, the context of Columbus Day when it was first declared, I think, by President Harrison, it, it came shortly after you had the, the lynching of, uh, of a number of, I forgot the exact number, but mm -hmm. it was the largest lynching, I think, mass lynching at one time in the South. Not that there weren't a lot of other lynchings, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, uh, but this was of Italian-Americans in New Orleans. They were accused of, of, of killing of the police commissioner, I think was the exact story. But anyway, there was a, they were, the, the mob broke in and, and, and lynched them. So there was a lot of anti-Italian sentiment out there. And and so the 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 symbol of Columbus, you know, the 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 discoverer of the Americas, the explorer, all of that, became an opportunity to try to recognize the Italian place in mm -hmm. you know in 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 this world. And the money was raised by the immigrant community to pay for the Columbus statue in New York City. Again, as as a way of trying to identify. Uh, a symbol, you know, through through Columbus, uh, to create a more, you know, positive appreciation for the Italian American community. So, so Columbus Day, October being uh, Italian Heritage Month, it's just been tied up with what uh, celebrating Italian American culture is about. You know, I majored in history in college, so history is always about revisions, reexamination. There's probably very few historical figures that if you evaluate them by modern standards, you might, you know, easily find some shortcomings. Yes, for sure. Certainly true about those of us who are alive today as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, I think my concern is that you, you, I think you can still celebrate the Columbus holiday in the context of the Italian-American experience with, with that, without getting into, and there's, there's debates, right? There are many people who advocate and argue that, you know, some of the negative stuff about Columbus just isn't true. You know, I mean, it's hundreds of years ago. We're never going to know all, all of that. But I, I would say this, that, that the Columbus holiday has been our, you know, uh, our opportunity for celebration. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think we should impose on other groups who their heroes or who their symbols should be. And I think if the Italians would like to retain a Columbus celebration, you know, th th that's not disrespect to anybody. I, you know, I, I have a dear friend, Angela Vivolo, who, who was, you know, in many ways the ambassador on this whole topic uh, with his leadership on these, these issues. And Angela was the first one to say there should be celebration of indig indigenous people. But don't don't take away, you know, what has been the custom for for using Co Columbus Day as an opportunity to celebrate the Italian experience. Mm -hmm. uh, it shouldn't be either or. We should be celebrating both. Uh, you know, so so, you know, for me, you know. Columbus Day is still a day uh, to celebrate, not in a chauvinistic or you know better than anybody else way, but just this has been, this has been part of what our identity has been, yeah. and 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 you know uh, you know I, I say that in a in a positive way, not in a mm -hmm. negative way towards anybody else. You've had your share of honors this month. Uh, you were one of the honorees at the annual Columbus Day Gala and Parade in New York City. Uh, that must have made you awfully proud. This month you were named Italian American of the Year at the Italian American Community Center in the great city of Albany. Um, I wonder if you had time to kind of reflect what that means for you. You know, your, your parents are gone, your grandparents yeah. are, are gone. It's, yeah. it's got to bring you a great source of pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I assume they're looking down and they're pleased about it. The Columbus Citizen Foundation does remarkable work and the gala raises money for scholarships. Again, getting back to my experience and my parents wanting us to have a college education, the Columbus Citizen Foundation puts a priority on raising money to help the next generation of Italian Americans achieve their goals through college education. So being one of the honorees there, you know, was really a great honor. And then the chance to be in the parade, not just marching along, but I got to ride in a car this time, you know, <laughs> which made it a little easier and a lot of fun. And um, you know, certainly since I spend so much time here in the capital region, we're, we're having this talk uh, here mm -hmm. in the Albany office, you know, to have one of the, 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 the premier uh, Italian-American groups, the uh, Italian-American uh, Community Center here in Albany uh, to want to recognize me. I mean, it, 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 it's a nice honor. I, I'd like to uh, I'd like to think that the fact that um, I'm the first Italian-American state controller and, you know, one of the statewide elected officials, that that's a source of pride for the community. And, you know, it's why I, you know, I always say I try very hard every day to never dishonor my family's heritage, my family name, 
you know, or certainly the larger community. So when, when some of these organizations want to uh, pay an honor, um, you know, I always have my mother whispering, don't get a swelled head when nice things happen. But I do, I do uh, feel very touched by, by the recognition and by the honor. Not, not, it, not because of anything special about me, but if it's, it's part of the overall recognition that um, our community has been successful or participating in, in, in the larger success of New York State, uh, if honoring me is, 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 is uh, part of that celebration, that, that's a very nice thing. Uh, you have often said that your parents held their Italian culture and heritage dear, um, but they were proud to become a part of the American experience. And I suppose that kind of sums up your, your, feel, your feelings yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, think, I think the best way they would always express is, you know, we're, we're Americans of Italian descent, you know, and, and uh, you know, my, my dad was a World War II veteran, um, you know, I mentioned my grandfather's a World War One veteran. I mean, you know, the, the legacy is is fighting for this country, believing strongly in this country, and uh, both of my parents, uh, you know, celebrated Fourth of July, Memorial Day, all those other holidays, as much as as, as any other. Um, but there was always a great deal of, of of respect for where we came from, and again, not with a sense of we're better than anybody else. We're not, mm. but but we're we're a piece of. Um, you know, of the, uh, what did, you know, uh, David Dinkins used to call the beautiful mosaic of uh, talking about New York City, but really you can say it about New York State, sure. you say it about the United States of America. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're a part of that. So, yeah, being, being proud to be American first and foremost, but recognizing we have a little bit of an Italian flavor attached to it. And uh, to me, it's important for that not to be lost. And I certainly hope for the next generation in my family, you know, from my niece and nephew, for my cousin's kids, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and obviously, you know, being part of the American experience, many of the next generation um, are not necessarily 100% Italian descent like I am. Right. Uh, although 23andMe said I'm also a little bit Greek Cypriot, which makes sense because sure. Southern Italy was mm -hmm. settled by the Greeks. Um, so especially as in this country, there's a lot of intermarriage between different groups. You know, I think it's important for all of what goes into you is celebrated. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so that's why I, I really do appreciate what the Columbus Citizens Foundation, Sons of Italy, all the regional uh, Italian American groups and the national ones do to make sure that our story doesn't get lost as 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 our nation's history progresses. We we've been an important part of the past. We want to be an important part of the future as well. That sums it up very nicely. State Controller Denapoli, thanks for sharing your story with us. Thank you, Matt. <laughs>